Good afternoon, this is Dr. Bill Wyatt again, and I'm going to discuss another orthodontic case with you. Uh, this one was a young man who came to me, he was missing his uh, first bicuspids. I don't know whether somebody removed them or he just never did have them. I don't remember exactly, and his teeth had just kind of closed back and kind of tucked in like this and uh, they needed to be torqued back out and filled out and and uh, fill his face out better so we took the case naturally and and went in to do that and i'm going to run through it and show you uh, approximately what we did it was back in the 70s uh, pretty early 70s and it was right after we had come up with our intruding arches, and so we used uh, that on him too. Uh, here's, here is the guy. Looks like a pretty normal facial structure, but then when you look at the teeth, he has this deep closed bite, and also the teeth are kind of tucked back like a class two division two type, and you can't actually see his lower anterior teeth. Now this is a young kid, you know, he's uh, he's got, I think, all of his permanent teeth at this this point, uh, but his teeth uh, kind of give, the facial structure reveals this when he talks and you see him with his teeth all tucked back in like that, that this doesn't uh, look normal for a a young person like that and when he talks you your lower anterior teeth or just looking when he opens his mouth you can't see his teeth so he's got a real deep bite also so looking at it from the side you can see where the uh, bicuspids are missing in in here and these teeth are angled you know the root of them comes in kind of turns uh, the tooth of the crown comes down. You wonder how, how you got them in there. You think of the roots coming straight up, but the roots will kind of go back up like that. And you don't even see any of his lower teeth when you start. So we're going to come in here and put these wires that you have to bring down and hook the teeth and be picking these teeth up and this coming this way. We'll be taking these teeth down and the force and it's hard to get this across to everybody I don't mean to harp on it but uh, people just don't think about the force that it takes to intrude these teeth it's four times four times harder to intrude these anterior teeth or just to take two exact teeth in exactly the same bone and it's four times harder to intrude one than it is to extrude the other one see so this one would come down four times more than this one would go up on this side so we've got these four or four teeth here the cuspids usually are pretty much where it'll go it kind of pivot off of that area you know going down and these teeth are the ones that pay the price and the reason they can pay it they chew in this area right here and when you in other words you have this arch wire let me erase that to kind of explain this a little more this comes out and has this deal like so and it'll come up and go around to the other side of the mouth and you'll have that same thing over the other side of the mouth. But when we prize down on this, the force that it is trying to pull these teeth up with is also pushing this tooth down, see. Well, it cocks the tooth to the side. It's not straight and it'll tend to lean and you'll have a little space open in here usually but they move very little and that's why this carrier applies 
they just put a little fancy deal there and come out here and now you hook class 2 elastics to it this tube doesn't move much but it backs up good and also pulls these forward good without changing much in this area and it's a good little appliance uh, and Tweed used it other people uh, are using it you could take one of these big daddy arches and just go from one side to the other and put a hook on it and it would do the, a very similar thing just as doesn't look as good though <laughs> so the carry is a fixers up real good now we're going to come in and this is in the 76 here so we hadn't gotten into all brackets yet we still were using some brackets but not all so well i think we have just uh, bands on this uh, young man right here and this is the other side you see the same thing this whole thing is just kind of tucked in this way you know so we want to fix it normal and have these teeth coming out and close this space right in here bring this up from the back and if he's got wisdom teeth back in here we want to be able to use them and fill this whole mouth in like that and make this look uh, relatively normal i don't know uh, whether he was missing these teeth or somebody else extracted them or maybe he had cuspids that were uh, crowded out and somebody took out the bicuspid and let them come down and i've had uh, cases where people just did that and uh, that does get the front to look a little better but it's not doesn't solve the problem it comes up with this problem these teeth are going this way and these are going this way and uh, these down here would like that and these uh, so it, it's it's not ideal by any means uh, all right now looking down from the top the six-year molar here uh, this 12-year molar hadn't gotten in but the 12-year molars in on the left side and of course this is pretty well closed up now and uh, these teeth right here we're going to have to kind of change the torque on them considerably uh, and probably keep the fullness in in there okay on the bottom they come up and are leaning backwards you see they're leaning backwards in here and this is the cuspid right here the bicuspid second by and the 12 year motor in on the bottom I think that 12 year motor on the other side, but it was not on the model, but it's, I think he had that. All right, we banded the teeth. And uh, you lucky rascals, you all, whoever's looking at this, you don't have to put up with these bands. But when we started this back in, uh, I, I just went straight to orthodontics from general practice. And uh, I worked quite a bit of orthodontics in my general practice. Finally got enough where I could support myself and the family. That, and we stopped doing everything except orthodontics back in 1970. And uh, we didn't get into full brackets until about 77 or 78 or somewhere in there. We were right on the edge of it here. It is 1977, but we'd been practicing here on him for uh, some time. Uh, so we've got these intruding arches here, the way up like this. We bring them down, hook, bring this one up, and hook to that, and we're opening the pipe with that. And you can open the pipe with this. those added on top, and. Uh, while you're thinking about it uh, otherwise and uh, this is where we put these little wires you see and this wire right here goes way on up when you pull this down you tighten this spring see and it's got a lot of kick to it and it picks these front teeth up it'll take these lower front ones down and these teeth will move very little 
you watch and see they and that the whole force to do this out in front looks like it would really shove these out of place but the occlusion the guy chewing on these teeth keeps them in pretty much in place they'll kick back some and there'll be a little space in 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 between them and the six-year molars and the second bicuspid in there but not not a great deal and uh, we'll go ahead and show this on the other side now the same thing except in this particular deal I straightened this out right here and cut the wire and cut it here and went back through the through the molars and by cusp it. Uh, I don't do that anymore. I just go ahead and let this come in. So this uh, usually we have just a very flexible wire in here to start with so we got a pretty stiff wire and you'd have to make a flexible unit here and then drop it down in there instead of cutting the arch wire to that here we've got that little wildcat wire uh, going and you don't have to do that to it either so let's see what we shows up is the other side again and looking at it from the top we're gradually coming out we're going to bring these six teeth to be lined up with these two back here. And here's your first and second motor, and I still don't see a second motor on this uh, side over here, but you definitely got one over on the, uh, that's the left side of the mouth. Okay. Here on the bottom now, we're leveling it out and for a while there, I used a lingual bar. You know, it'd come out and go down like this, and you could expand it. I don't mess with this anymore. Uh, that you can do without that coming in. You just uh, band this tooth as soon as you can, and hopefully he's got the second more over there. If he doesn't, we're waiting on the wisdom to to come in. Uh, now there's the the, uh, the intruding wire. See these teeth when we started were down here somewhere and so they've already come up well these came up part of the way and these went down part of the way and anyway we've gained uh, several millimeters of space uh, in there the length and that is kind of we're leveling this jaw out something like that. All right, uh, here there's another view of the uh, close-up of this intruding arch wire. And here's the one that's clipped right here. And if this raises up, then this will line up there. Now on the bottom, we've got that real flexible wire going in through there. All right, that's just another view of that intruding wire spring that uh, kicks that thing out and makes it go and we're already getting closer see this lined up and this is uh, changed from there to that point and this is 1977 so we've been in there a little longer and now we're getting closer this space is pretty well closed. This one is open bigger. So when we get out, we'll, we'll tie that and close it together there. And now we've got both second molars. This second molar came in late, and you see we've got a bracket on the second molar. That's fine. I don't mind putting brackets on second molars, but first molars We've got so much load on them, and we've got these lingual deals on them. We like to uh, use bands on second, first motors anyway. Second motor is not that important unless we have to use it as a six-year motor. Then it is. I mean, I don't mean it's not important, but we don't use it in the orthodontics as much. Now, that's just another 
view of it and you see a little bit of space here but very little change in the, the inclusive surface of that tooth maybe a little bit you see this is kind of lined up like that and so it's got a little bit of uh, action that you can see where it push that down but not not very much and here we're in 88, 78, excuse me, and uh, we've got him lined up pretty good. We'll pull that second by, second by cuspid right up against that molar, and we'll just go down over this. So I will just kind of speed through this. This space here is completely closed, and we've got this one is reduced, and the height is right, and we're getting the torque on the teeth looking good as we go up here they're kind of torquing out like that and that's working out and here on the bottom we've got a little bit of space on one side right here and that's closed over there we just pretty well leveled out now the upper teeth are up quite a ways almost to where you want the over jet and over bite and everything uh, to work see when we finish a case i like to have them be able to bite their front teeth together like that and nothing touch back here in the back so if somebody wants to bite something off up here they're biting their teeth together with no teeth touch back here and then when you go back like that, and you chew back here, you see, you can't put the force out here that you can put in this area right here. It just goes from here up to here. When you bite on your front teeth, you got force on this joint. And you can't put much force on that joint or it'll start giving you trouble. Now, if it's a life or death situation, you might can bite hard, very hard, with your front teeth but it puts an awful load because the muscles are right back here and these are out in front of the muscles for you to put 10 pounds of force out here you probably have to have 20 or more back on the uh, in the joint area all right let's see now the upper intruding wire is still in there i think we've gotten rid of the lower one and this is going along pretty good. Now we're about to close this gap over on the right side of the mouth. And it's closed up on the right and left now. And so here is where we started with the models. And there's where we ended up and we put him in retainers there. Now you see this little acrylic, this is where this, I think we've had a, in other words, when we had bands on the teeth, you had to take the bands off, you hook a rubber band there, a light, long lasting rubber band around from motor to motor, and you chew gum and it pulls these teeth together, and you just hope and pray that the torque's going to be all right when you got the gaps together so you had two sheets of, of metal plus two layers of cement between each tooth in there and you close it and it takes away part of the torque that you had you don't know exactly so you leave them torqued a little extra and then as you reduce, reduce that you hope it is lined up with the proper torque on them so if you're wondering about using bands, uh, brackets were so much better. I can tell you about uh, 30 some odd good reasons for going with brackets opposed to bands. Now, that's some good things on bands. I think bands on six year models are good, but uh, there's very few other places except we, we band the th the anterior teeth when they put these fingers for uh, tongue thrusters or 
in there. We put them on metal bands so they won't lose them very easy. So here we are with that torque like that. And this is a class one relation. That's okay. And then we did it this way. So we changed the facial structure of this young man and his smile and everything and these teeth will erupt together better and if he's got wisdom teeth and he grows any jaw length he'll be able to accommodate those wisdom teeth. I don't have a x-ray on him here to show you that but he should have room enough for his uh, um, wisdom teeth to come in and so that's the way we finish this young man up and this is the retainer and this was at first now we take this back all the way and we go back here on this 036 wire and we lay one over the other and solder it back in this area we don't solder this I mean this looks good but this would break right here frequently and not too often but it, it broke and the others hardly ever come or never have one of them back. This little groove is where the rubber band that we close the space we just take that acrylic off of that tooth. Well, those two two cusp of teeth. And this is the lower when we started in seventy six and I don't think I have a lower shot here. But the main line zone. Now the upper, we've got a bite plate, and this is where we, in, when we went in to in seventy some of we were making the bite plate here where the lower front teeth meet right up against that, and uh, that keeps. In other words, in right, you you're over jet and over bite is proper, and another person can go out here and bite their front teeth together and their back teeth don't touch. They can chew on the left side here and the right teeth don't touch. Chew on the right and the left teeth don't touch. And I, I try to get every case doing that because that's what, you know, if you go over here to chew on the right and your teeth hit over here, you'll press harder and you get the teeth together, your jaw kind of bend but it puts a lot of extra weight on your joint and you can't have trouble with the joint uh, like that. So anyway, this is the young man. He looks quite normal. And that's the end of that video. And I thank you for watching. I hope you would uh, subscribe to our channel. We like to have everybody if we can get in there if we can. And uh, thanks for watching, and uh, maybe you learned something, and I'm sure some of you could teach me a few things <laughs> soon. So I'm going to sign off here.